Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Alter Your Health Podcast. Dr. Ben here, happy to be with you for another conversation about whole food, plant-based nutrition and mind-body medicine to empower you to heal yourself. Whew. All right, deep breath. This is a difficult conversation to have, um, why I'm no longer vegan. Yeah, that's the topic of today's conversation on the podcast. And yes, we're talking about whole food, plant-based nutrition, so it's a little bit awkward to bring up this why I'm no longer vegan thing, because the fact of the matter is I'm not, I'm no longer vegan. I haven't been vegan for a really long time. And maybe some of you saw this coming. Maybe some of you already kind of uh, knew this. And maybe this is a big shock to you. But in any case, I wanted to discuss why I'm no longer vegan. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I tried, I tried my best, you know, I've got a vegan leather belt, you know, you can see that it's well worn. I tried, but it just, just didn't do it for me it just didn't really do it for me. The fact is that I still have a pair of leather shoes in my closet. This is real leather. And I feel kind of ashamed. And this is the worst part or maybe maybe not the worst part but i i do eat honey i do put honey in my matcha tea i know that bees we can talk a little bit about honey but bees make honey and yeah, i'm exploiting bees and all right this is the worst part i feed our cats greenies oven roasted chicken flavor cat food treats these are most clearly not vegan. <laughs> so I'm kind of joking. I'm kind of joking. If you, if you catch the drift here, I'm kind of joking. Yes, I've got all of these things. I, I do have a leather, a, a vegan leather belt. <laughs> I do have proper leather shoes that I've had for like 10 years. And I do eat honey. And um, this conversation is, I think, a very important one to have because there's a huge difference between veganism and being vegan and following a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And I have to kind of come out of the closet a little bit and admit that I really am not a vegan. I am not a vegan and um, I, I want to, uh, it's okay if you're a vegan. I, I love you just the way you are a vegan or not. Um, but I also love and respect and acknowledge anyone who's not vegan anyone who's a carnivore or a paleo dieter or any, anything, any, any follower of anything. Um, so, you know, I, I just have to, we just have to air out this conversation around veganism and plant-based eating. And there's just a lot to discuss. There's just a lot to discuss. So, so for those who don't know, because a lot of people ask, like, are you vegan? And honestly, I generally answer yes, because when people ask that question, generally it's in the context of food and it's just really easy to say, yeah, I'm vegan. I don't eat meat, fish, chicken, dairy, eggs as, as uh, I forgot who's, who I heard it from first, but I don't consume anything that had a mother. Um, so maybe with the exception of kombucha, if you know that kombucha is a fermented drink and it, and it, that the mother is kind of that SCOBY or that symbiotic culture of bacterial and yeast that kind of work and, and create the fermentation process that makes kombucha or apple cider vinegar or things like that. But in any case, um, veganism is for those who really are vegan is so much more than a way of eating. It's so much more than excluding meat, dairy, eggs, and honey, um, from the diet. It's about living in a way that avoids the exploitation of animals. And um, they're the main tenant of veganism, which I certainly can get behind. And I and I feel like in, in some ways, I very much am, am a vegan, um, because the main tenant is nonviolence, or in yoga, that's called ahimsa, nonviolence. And to be honest, I think that a lot of vegans in, in my personal experience are a little hypocritical because there's this 
real grounded tenets, this, this priority to be nonviolent, to be compassionate, to not inflict unnecessary suffering or death upon others. Um, of course, the one that that's important when it comes to choosing food. Um, but I, in my experience, there's a lot of violence in the form of criticism and words and hatred and lack of acceptance and compassion for people who aren't vegan. There's a righteousness that often is held. And of course, I'm very much generalizing here. I know a lot of vegans who are compassionate and nonviolent in all ways. Um, but I just wanted to share a brief experience that I was, I'm not sure when this was, if it was last summer or the summer before, or no, it wasn't even during the summer. Anyways, I was interviewed on a vegan YouTube channel. Um, you know, the, the, someone came over to our home in Carbondale and sat me down and just asked me a lot of questions about plant-based nutrition, it, you know, not really veganism again, you know, cutting hairs here, but I was, we were talking about plant-based nutrition and health, you know, of course that's my expertise. That's what I do. That's how I live. Um, so we were, our, the conversation was focused around that on the vegan YouTube channel and the comments that came in when this YouTube video was published were really harsh and eye-opening to me. There were so many comments like, this guy is not a vegan. He didn't say one thing about the animals. He just cares about himself and health and blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I must admit that I do care. I do care more about myself. I do care more about human health than I do animals. I, I do. I do. I think that it's important to take care of ourselves. If we are, you know, if, if let's, let's just get, get to the real extreme scenario. If I was standing on a desert Island and I didn't have any food, I would probably cast a fishing line into the ocean or lake or whatever, and try to catch some food because we can eat food. We can eat animals to survive. We've done that throughout the course of human history. Does that mean it's the healthiest and best thing for us to do for our health? No, um, not, not at all. That's what all, all of the science really says that, you know, all of the, the big studies and whatnot proving the efficacy of a, of a well-planned whole food plant-based lifestyle. You know, that's what we're doing, preaching and, and walking the walk and talking the talk in this podcast and at Alter Health. Uh, but let's, just be real, like, you know, following an ideology, like a religion is not necessarily very healthy. So in my, my personal philosophy and, and honestly, like the, the philosophy or kind of uh, mindset or outlook that I hope to Im impose and share and encourage people to consider following themselves is one that's much more objective and scientific and critically thinking and not just like blindly following an ideology and with no regard for health because um you know ve veganism is not really a health movement it's like more of a animal rights human you know animal rights and and you know the the ahimsa and the nine violence the compassion it's not really health focused which brings me to another really important point that in 2022, soon to be 2023, the, the world today is filled, filled, filled with all sorts of hyper-processed vegan junk food. We know that we are bombarded by that. Really, that that's if you're a vegan, that's really cool because it makes it really easy to go out and live in the world and just kind of go to McDonald's and find the vegan burger on the menu or what have you. Um, and uh, once again, it's very, very important to make the clear distinction that um, the, the vegan food is not health food a lot of the times, especially as we move forward in the future, because the food industry is meeting the demands of the people, which are, you know, for many reasons, I don't want to consume animal products. I don't want to be a part of that, which I think is really cool for health issues, but people are then getting sold all sorts of hyper-processed vegan junk food that is not, you know, that is vegan, that is made of, 
um, you know, super processed plants and all sorts of other, you know, synthetic fillers and preservatives and whatnot. But in any case, it's very important to recognize the fact that just because something is vegan does not make it healthy. In fact, I will clearly state that I would much prefer myself or anyone who is looking for health to eat a clean, as, and, and we talk about this a lot, there's really no such thing as clean meat, but you know, uh, you know, doing their best to seek out a good quality, cleaner type of meat versus the hyper-processed impossible burger or you know i I know that there are some vegan meat alternatives that are healthier than others but generally speaking a lot of them are really not conducive to health so that's all to say that you know I, i just wanted to kind of flush out the distinction between veganism which once again is an ideal ideology many ways like a religion just kind of following this dogma versus living a whole food plant-based lifestyle that orients around making conscious objective and scientifically proven decisions to choose foods based on what's going to best be fueling our bodies and leading us in the, in the direction of more health um and again i i think that we it, we can it can be get really slippery the slope can get really slippery because when we start operating from the world of veganism then we take on a new level of what's often referred to as confirmation bias where we're just looking out in the world and only seeing the things that prove our ideology that reinforce our thinking and i think that that's not necessarily healthy or productive either on kind of a societal, psychological kind of social level, nor is it healthier productive on kind of a physical health outcome level as, as well. I think we need to be much more critically thinking and objective with our pursuit of health. So I, I recognize that, you know, I might be me. I hope I'm not, but I might be offending some vegans. Like I said, I know I did offend some vegans unknowingly when I was interviewed on that vegan YouTube channel. And I didn't talk about the animal rights. I didn't talk about all that stuff. And the fact is that, again, that's not my focus. That's not my expertise. That's clearly doesn't mean that I don't care about animals. It means that my expertise and focus is on human health. And for that reason, I'm not going to start feeding my cats uh, vegan food because that's a whole nother conversation. But cats need specific amino acids that are only found in animal products. I believe it's carnitine. Um, So I do have leather shoes that I I honestly don't even wear shoes. (laughs) The only shoes that I really mostly wear are are running shoes or like hiking shoes and uh, like slip on things, to you know, and bike shoes. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but I, you know, if, when, if I do want to dress up, I do have, have uh, these leather shoes. And I have to admit, you know, the vegan leather. And that, let's talk about another thing real quick, just while I'm ranting and raving about vegan products. I don't know, you know, because the whole the whole one of the arguments is that that animal based products are not environmentally friendly. Right. That if everyone wore a, a, a leather belt, then, you know, we'd be killing all the animals and, and stuff. And I think that's probably true. But to be honest, I also don't know what goes into making the vegan leather products. I, I just simply don't know. Um, I know that there's probably a whole lot of waste and a lot of, um, you know, unnecessary kind of waste products and, and whatnot. And this i have to admit that you know it's this this leather vegan leather belt probably would only last for like you know a a fourth or a tenth of the time that a proper leather belt is that has a lot more integrity that's all to say like i don't think that there's one thing that's the better than the other so for that reason i think we just like get off our high horse and stop being so self-righteous with our our vegan products or this or that and we just do what we want to do and, you know, that being said, be more conscious about the general impact. Like I said, I, I, I bought this to try it out. Um, yeah, and it, I don't wear it actually anymore. I have a new belt that's like made of, out of elastic that seems to be holding up 
a lot better. But <laughs> that's all to say that there's a big difference, a big, big difference between veganism, which is and whole food plant based lifestyle, because veganism encompasses so much more than diet. And with regard to diet, again, there's so much vegan junk food. And when someone says I'm vegan, really, all that means is I don't eat meat, dairy, eggs, or anything that had a mother and for most people also honey, like I said, I do enjoy honey. But when someone says I follow a whole food plant based way of eating or lifestyle, that means that I eat intact, whole, natural plant foods, unprocessed, et cetera, et cetera. So it's much more, you know, descriptive of what we do consume as whole food plant based. Some people say whole food plant based vegans, but it's much more descriptive of what we do seek to consume versus just talking about the few, very few things that we don't consume. Now, with regard to bees, I'm not an expert on the topic, but the, the argument is that consuming honey, it's sticky, <laughs> um, consuming honey is uh, exploiting bees. And then a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, what else exploits bees is pollinating anything, really. But a lot of people make the argument for almond trees and the production of almonds requires a lot of shipping and transporting of bees in order to properly pollinate the trees so that you can grow the almonds and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think, unfortunately, we live in a world where bees are being are needing to be exploited, which is really scary from my perspective. And that all boils down to the requirement or not the requirement, but the fact that so many herbicides and pesticides and antibiotics are being used in our environment that are wiping out broad swaths of populations of not only bees, but all sorts of insects, microorganisms and life forms, which is very scary, but not due to plant-based eaters, not due to vegans, not due to any anyone. That's due to the conventional agricultural industry, um, which is so corrupt and disgusting and quite frankly needs to hit like a rock bottom point, I think, for um, for more transformative and, and certainly regenerative processes to take their place in a in a real significant way. Um, but a lot of people, you know, a lot of the paleo folks, and now I'm, I'm going to switch gears and talk about kind of the paleo vegan argument, if I can, or the carnivore vegan or the regenerative agricultural vegan movement. A lot of those guys, which we're all we're all brothers and sisters, but a lot of people who kind of criticize a whole food, a plant based diet or a vegan diet or, or, you know, not just talking about food, a lot of people who criticize this way of eating say that. We are responsible for the monocrop agriculture because of our consumption of soy and corn and canola and all of these monocrop huge um, farms that that largely make up the, the huge swaths of land in the middle of our country and I, I presume a lot of the world. Um, and the fact of the matter is, you know, we just need to get really clear here. The vast majority, I forget the percentage, if there is one, 85, 90, whatever percent of those monocrop, um, that stuff, first of all, as whole food plant-based eaters, we're not eating a lot of soy. We're not eating a lot of corn. If we are, it's like corn on the cob. If we are, it's like soybeans or maybe tempeh or tofu. Um, but the vast majority of that, and of course, canola is, is grown in large quantities to make canola oil, which is part of vegetable oil and so on and so forth. But the vast majority of these huge farms that are growing ridiculous amounts of GMO stuff using all sorts of disgusting techniques and practices, that stuff is going to feed animals in the conventional agricultural, you know, CAFO sort of feeding operations that, that, are, that are most abundant in our society. Um, so that's the fact of the matter is that the omnivorous and animal eating people are, are perpetuating more so these unhealthy agricultural practices that 
require this huge amount of food to be produced simply in order to feed the animals that people eat. Um, so that's where the, the soy and the corn and the stuff comes from, you know, as whole food plant-based eaters, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I don't eat a lot of soy. I don't eat a lot of corn and that, which, that, which I might from time to time is in the whole food form, not the stuff that is coming from those huge monocrop operations that are genetically modified and whatnot. Um, so that's all to say once again, like plant-based eating, whole food, plant-based eating is awesome is simple, is straightforward, is sustainable. You know, we can, we can, you know, and this is again, just kind of more environmentally talking, like we can sustain ourselves as whole food plant-based eaters on a very small, with a very small input in terms of our requirement for growing stuff. When we put in an animal, that's like a middleman to getting our calories, then we, we, inf we, we impose a whole other degree of wastefulness that goes into the process, not to mention back to the vegan argument, not to mention the life of that animal. Oh yeah. While, while I'm on the topic of like vegan stuff and, you know, a, a lot of people also claim that, um, when you are like monocrop farming and when you're farming in general, you're killing tons of rodents and field mice and all sorts of things when you're dragging the thing through the field and ripping stuff up and, and, um, how, how that's so like, so non-vegan. Um, and it's so much better to just eat a cow, you know, and when you eat a cow, you're just eating a cow and you're not also, um, sacrificing the life of all these other little, little smaller creatures that go into that process. And to be honest, I think there's something to be said for that. But I think it also goes back to the fact that we need to stop the agricultural process that just is like the on the huge, unsustainable sort of scale that just has only one motive. And that is production. That is production quantity, not like the quality of crops that we're producing. Um, so we need to kind of get more in balance, get more in harmony and sync and in better relationship with nature for sure. Not for sure. Um, so yeah, I kind of already mentioned like the, the non-vegan, the non-vegan stuff, uh, and items that I consume mainly honey. Um, um, oh yeah. Back to that. Like with the honey naturally, like bee, bees just live their life. They do their thing. They pollinate flowers, that's they they just that's like that's what they do that's what they do they just buzz around and pollinate and then honey they produce honey as a normal and natural byproduct it's not like milk and cows like cows produce milk to feed baby cows honeys or bees don't, don't produce honey to like feed bees they don't do anything with their honey the honey is literally like their my i don't know once again i'm not an expert but the honey is literally like the waste product from the bee, like the poop and the pee <laughs> kind of just totally waste. The bees don't need the honey. So the relationship that humans can have with bees, I believe to be very symbiotic. That's not to say that it is, as we know it today, uh, a healthy relationship. Again, unfortunately, depending on where we get our honey and how we get it, etc. cetera, I, I, I know that some bees are exploited and, um, and the, again, back to the fact that so many herbicides and pesticides and chemicals exist that are really putting the, the general bee population at risk, you know, that is the bigger issue that, again, you can't point the finger in any direction other than just the conventional agricultural system and the, the chemical industry that is creating and, you know, spreading all of these stuff, all these things that are wiping out bee and insect populations, which is really scary and concerning when it comes to human health as well, because we know that those same chemicals and herbicides and pesticides and practices and whatnot also very much damage our human biome as well. And, you know, we, we can't live in a world that is filled with antibiotics. Antibiotics we know means anti-life. It's just not sustainable to life. We need to find our balance with antibiotics. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I already also talked about how like there's this hypocrisy in the vegan movement. I witnessed it again, 
uh, I'll, I'll put a link in, in the, in the podcast page to that YouTube video that I was interviewed on. And, you know, we were just talking about plant-based nutrition and health and then all these, like, all the, the trolls on YouTube are just like bashing me for not being a real vegan. And again, I have to admit, that's what this conversation is all about. I'm not a real vegan. That's not my goal. That's not my thing. That's not where I go. And again, I hope I'm not like turning away anyone who is a vegan and only wants to associate with vegan stuff and vegan people. Um, again, I, I, I strive to be compassionate. I strive to be nonviolent. I strive to be accepting and loving towards anyone, regardless of where they stand in any sort of religion or ideology or any sort of way. And my feeling and hope is that vegans and non-vegans alike can all strive towards that ideal to just treat others the way that we wish to be treated in that sort of just genuine respect and human dignity. Um, but unfortunately, as is the case with any kind of group of people, you could say there's some bad apples. There's some bad apples that are just, I don't know, it's okay. We'll, we'll do our best. So finally, I want to wrap up this, this episode, this conversation about how we can move towards embracing more natural whole plant foods with grace, with ease and compassion for ourselves for our family, for our community, for the planet, for the animals. Um, and I think it really all comes down to just taking ourselves off the hook. I consult and work with and talk with people all the time who have such levels of perfectionistic idealism for themselves. Um, maybe they also identify with veganism. So they just have this it's other level of imposed rigidity and dogma with how they're they should be doing and what they what how, how they should be living and what they should be doing um but in any event i think that the first most powerfully important thing that we can do is just take that layer of perfectionism off of ourselves because i always like to think and feel and say that on the most fundamental spiritual level we are perfect divine beings you know, when we all boil down to perfectionism at our core and with our perfect core divine nature, we are living and expressing and using this human experience and the human experience is by nature imperfect, dualistic, as I say, and as I talked about um, last week in the podcast, we're talking about balancing duality in our human experience, because that's what the human experience is, is dualistic. Um, so we can strive to, to look and see and operate from and recognize the divine, perfect, undamaged nature that is our true essence and also fully embrace the tendencies that we might have to struggle, to operate this way or that way in our dualistic physical world reality. Um, but as we kind of take ourselves off the hook and just kind of become more objective, and I always like to say scientific in our approach to health and nutrition and life, then we can become less emotionally invested and reactive, reactive and just more grounded in common sense. And therefore, like when we are, when we, you know, when we are at a restaurant and we do have a menu of items and we do feel this like, oh, I, I you know, there's, there's not a really good quote unquote vegan option on the menu. Um, like the vegan option is just some gross oily thing. Maybe I'm going to have a piece of salmon, <clears throat> you know, may, like maybe that's the most common sense thing that is going to be best nourishing holistically for me in that moment, you know? And again, if you know what, what's worse than eating it, first of all, salmon, you know, arguably is one of the best non vegan, you know, best non-vegan things that we can consume, a, 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 a kind of a, assuming that it's, you know, not contaminated with tons of heavy metals and plast microplastics in the oceans. It's, it's like, you know, it's wild caught and whatnot. Um, but in any case, the point is that we, what, what's, what's worse than eating anything, you know, a chocolate cake, bacon, salmon, 
egg McMuffin, what's worse than eating anything is eating that and then piling on, on an additional layer of judgment and criticism. And, oh my gosh, I can't believe I do that to myself. And then I feel the need to punish myself. I feel the need to starve myself the next for the next meal or, or run five miles or, or whatever it is. That's something that we need to just free ourselves from these sort of habits and patterns to relate in with food and our health and our lifestyle and this sort of punishment oriented, unsustainable sort of way. We just got to just get our heads on straight and look through our clear eyes and just be more objective and scientific and, you know, maybe a little bit less emotionally reactive in the process, which, you know, I think a little bit of support, a little bit of external guidance and coaching might be helpful for some people, depending on where they're at in their history of, of food and health and what's going on in any event, just I think that's really important when it comes to sustainability with our health, with our nutrition, because the last thing we want to do is be kind of like swaying from these extremes. Of course, these extremes can be emotionally taxing. You know, they can be really, you know, stressful for our psyche. And these extremes can also be physiologically taxing as well. Our, our body isn't designed to be kind of like brought through these sort of extremes nutritionally in terms of, you know, just for lack of a better term, binging and starving and um, crash dieting and detoxes and cleanses and stuff like that. Sustainability kind of routine rhythm is what our body wants. That being said, I think it's a good kind of note to wrap up on. And and as as I'm wrapping up this conversation on the topic of sustainability, on the topic of just kind of finding our rhythm and routine with health, Dr. Suzanne and I are super excited to be hosting another whole food plant-based challenge. And this one is starting um, actually on New Year's Eve. Uh, we are starting on New Year's Eve in the middle of the day. Uh, I think it's 11 o'clock mountain time on New Year's Eve. So hopefully before you go out partying, before the ball drops, before you let loose and have a wild time to bring in 2023, we're going to kind of set the intention, set the stage, set the foundation for uh, a supportive and healthy start to 2023. And again, I, I think that, you know, I, th I think it's kind of cliche. <laughs> I do to be started off 2023 with this sort of challenge, but the intention is for it to be much more action oriented, like boots on the ground stuff. A lot of the challenges in the past have been just so chocked full with way too much information that has kind of left me feeling, oh my gosh, that was so much. <laughs> that was too much. So we're going to kind of tone things down in the information side of things and just get more boots on the ground practical because I think that's what most people benefit from, support, practicality, not just getting a PhD in plant-based nutritional science. <laughs> that's that's not really going to serve the, the majority of us. Um, so that's a big announcement. If you want to lear learn more about the challenge, boy, I don't have the link memorized, but go to Alter Health, check your email if you're on the Alter Health email list, and um, you will put a little like thing. To, you'll, you'll find it. You'll find the challenge. And lastly, lastly, the other opportunity for you, the other action step, if you are really wanting to start being more nourishing in your, in your life, in your world, ending up, ending up wrapping up 2022, moving into 2023, hopefully, you know, by now the meal guide membership opportunity, which is just $11 a month, and you'll receive a weekly meal guide crafted from Dr. Susanna. And then in, in addition to that weekly meal guide, we've got a monthly support, support call that I believe the next one is scheduled for the second Monday in January, which is like January 9th or something like that. That's pretty cool. Meal guide membership, super easy opportunity to just really receive more continuity support, feedback guidance that is hopefully going to inspire you in your health. Oh yeah, finally, finally, the cleanse, the uh, winter cleanse is also on the calendar starting January 13th. So a lot going on in the beginning of January. No excuses not to really make this the best year ever. 
really make it the best year ever, at least the best January ever. And then, you know, we build the momentum, we have the confidence, we feel great, and we just live the rest of our life. That That's the idea, right? So anyways, the Alter Health Winter Cleanse starting January 13th, awesome opportunity to kind of press the hard reset button, reestablish healthy relationships with food, again, in kind of a non-dogmatic, practical, common sense sort of way become more objectively connected with our body, our reset our taste buds, and just reattune with what our body truly craves. Because so many people are just kind of hung up on pleasure trap stuff. That's what happens when we eat too much honey. <laughs> That's what happens when we eat too much maple syrup. We eat too much added sweetness or also added oils and sugars or and salts like especially that perfect trifecta salt oil sugar right so we're going to be sos free for the cleanse and really just hyper nourishing super hydrating kind of stuff you can learn more about the cleanse at www.alter.health.cleanse slash cleanse boy that was a lot of like commercials but oh yeah this episode sponsored by bacon because <laughs> i'm just kidding this episode is sponsored by alter health so go to www.alter.health and get all your alter health needs including the cleanse the meal guide membership and of course thrive on plants if you're ready to really take it to the next level that's enough for today thanks for hanging with me thanks for letting me air out this difficult conversation around veganism versus whole food, plant-based living. And um, yeah, hope you're feeling clear and healthy and inspired to just go on, go forward and live your best darn life. So until next time, see you then. Peace and love.